Hello! In this episode, we are going to create our first story. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the editor. In the previous video, we sent the brief to one of my colleagues. This is exactly what my colleague will see when he clicks on the invite. So as you can see, he immediately sees the editorial brief, which is already opened up here. He'll also see the title pre-filled of the story and the keyword that he needs to optimize his content for. So as you can see, the keyword pop-ups has already been put in the SEO checker. So let's go ahead and start writing our story. So the editor is a distraction free, meaning that it's a blank canvas, making sure you can concentrate on the content itself. Also, you don't have to worry about the colors, the fonts, and so on. Everything will appear automatically and correctly on the connected CMS that you are using. The options for the text appear when you select the text here, for example. So let's go ahead and do it. So as you can see, my option bar will appear here. So I can make a bold, I can make a link, I can make a header out of it. Maybe I just want to make a quote, and so on. So each time you hit the return, you have an interactive media, a video, embedded rich media that you can add from Twitter, Instagram, a podcast, whatever you want. You can make it into a header, a quote, and so on. So when I click on image, there are multiple choices here. So you can upload a certain image, you can use one from your media library image that you already used, for example, or you can even grab it from your Dropbox or Google Drive and so on. Another option is searching for an image in the search bar. Our story chief is connected to a library of millions of photos, which include millions of images that you can use for free. So let's go ahead and search for people. So here I have a nice image for people walking on the sidewalk. However, make sure if you use a photo that you leave the credits to the photographer here. So let's continue with our text. So I've already written this article and I'm now just going to paste the text in here. Uh, so the first step is to check the grammar. Just a quick tip, you can install a free Grammarly plugin to your own browser. So while you write your story, you can check the grammar, which is more interactive. So let's go ahead and correct everything. So now that our grammar is perfect, we can start making our story look much more attractive. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add some more images here. This time, let's use images from our media library. So let's go ahead and select this photo. Uh, here and voila. So further down maybe here we want to add something to make it even more attractive. So for example something from embedded rich media. And embedded rich media can be from various sources. So it can be a podcast, an audio from Spotify, it can be a form, it can be from various other sources such as HubSpot from Google, it can even be a table. But for this example we are going to use it from Instagram. So if I go to Instagram here I already have a really nice post here. So just grab the URL and voila, and then paste it in here, and like magic, now this Instagram source is embedded in your article. And as you can see, this is not just an image, meaning it's in an interactive post. So your readers can view the profile, the number of likes, they can click on the buttons, and they will see the number of likes changing. So now the article is much more attractive. Next, let's get started with optimizing our story for search engines here. So as you can see, I already have a green light, meaning that we have a pretty decent score, but it's still at 84%. I want to get my SEO and readability scores at 100. So the first thing we need to do here is fix the key phrase, which isn't in the intro. So let's change our intro a little bit. So we'll get rid of this, delete this, um, and then we'll select this, uh, copy and paste it here, and we'll put in our key phrase at the beginning here. All right, our score already went up to 90. Now, the next thing we need to do is get rid of the slog stop words. So slog refers to the URL of your article. So let's go ahead and edit that. So click on edit and it will bring me to the right section. So as you can see, my link, which will be indexed on Google is way too long. Here, yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and make it shorter. And we'll put in blog pop-ups instead. And as you can see, our score just went up again. The next tip is our image alt attributes. This indicates that our images don't have enough information about them. So when we click on an image, you can see this eye icon appear here. Here you can enter your alt tag. So let's go ahead and put that in. Our keyword in here, which is pop-ups. 
While we are here, another nice option we provide is Edit Image, which allows you to edit the photo within StoryTube. So as you can see, if I click on there, there's a built-in image editor. So for example, you can crop the image. If I go here, you can change the filters, add some text to it, and make some basic color corrections. So let's use this edited version here and then click on Save. Also, the edited version will be saved in your media library. So let's continue with our SEO. So the key phrase in the title here, the issue here is that my title doesn't contain any key phrases in front of it. So let's start with that. Let's change our title around a bit. So let's go to the title and let's put in pop-ups in the beginning of the title. And let's go ahead and delete this end part here. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, next, another key phrase in the slug. So part of our key phrase doesn't appear in the slug. So let's go back to the slug again. As you can see, we actually made a typo mistake here. So now after changing that, the SEO score should improve again. And now after following the tips, our score is optimized for 100%. So let's now do the same for the readability score. It now says we have consecutive sentences. So let's go ahead and fix that. So if I click on show, the tool will bring me to the right section of the copy where you need to fix things. So here you can see we use the word too many times here. So let's go ahead and delete this sentence here. So now the score has gone up. It now says subheading distribution. This means one section of my text is just too long and doesn't have any subheader. So let's add a subheader here, for example. But maybe we should do it more in the middle. So for example, here, somewhere. And let's make sure our keyword is in the header. So we'll definitely use the word pop-ups here. And then we'll write why it is important and voila. So by adding a subheader, you can see my readability score has reached 100%. So now you can see that both of my scores have reached 100%. The next stage is collaborating. To start collaborating, click on the collaborate button on the top right corner here. You can add multiple team members to work on this article, or you can ask someone to review. Let's ask two people to review this article. So when you click on the drop down here, the users that you have already added to your StoryChief account will appear here. Yet you can also ask for feedback from someone outside of your StoryChief account. It just has to be a valid email address. So let's add someone outside and ourselves here. So what this means is that these few people will be asked to review your story, even if they're not a user within your StoryChief account. They will also be able to give you feedback and improve the content without actually having to log in or without having to see the login page. So let's go ahead and also add a note in here. So can you check, please? Also, make sure that this check mark is active because this will include a button that they can approve or decline the content. You can also access the preview link here. So to give you an example, this is what they will see. They will see that they need to approve or decline the content but they also can select different parts within the article and comment on it. And while commenting, they can also tag someone. So the person will receive a notification through here. Now I've asked for the approval of this article to multiple people, including myself. So I'm going to improve it myself here. So approve, and now you can see that the icon here has changed. So it still says pending approval, but it has two circles. One of them has turned green, but the other one is still gray. That means that some people have already approved it. However, others still haven't approved it yet. Another useful feature here is within the editor, there are statistics here. So for example, you can check the word count, um, the amount of minutes it will take on average to read the full article, and some other stats on the top right corner. You can even have some more options here. So for example, the version history, you can see the changes that you've made. You can, for example, see who made the changes and when the changes were made. So you can always restore the previous backup version if you need to do so. You can also download a copy as a PDF, as a Word document and a zip file with all the images that you've used. If you're used to working with shortcuts, then go ahead and take a look at what shortcuts we support. You can also see that my comments appear at the top here. Every time when you select the comment, it will bring you to the right section where you reply to the comment or you resolve it. The resolved comments will appear in the results section next to the comments. And now the article is ready to be published.